السلام عليكم ابنائي وبناتي طلبة وطالبات الثانوية العامة شعبة علم علوم اهلا بكم ونتمنى ان شاء الله تكونوا في احسن حال وبخير ان شاء الله. هنبدا أه النهارده ان شاء الله الفاينل ريفيجن ريفيجن اون سم شابترز اوف جيولوجي وبعد كده بنبدا ان شاء الله في ريفيجنز اوف ايكولوجي وبعد كده فاينل اكزامز ان شاء الله. Now we are about to start our final revision in chapter one at first. The first question, as you see, it is a figure. This figure is considering with a fault. What is the type of fault? I wanted to be careful here. If he told you what will be the type of this fault, of course, it will be a normal fault. Why? Because the hanging wall, which is on the right side, is moving downward in relation to the foot wall. Okay. But now he told you something that from the figure, it represents a surface view for a geological structure. If you want to stop here for surface view for a geological structure, of course, the geological structure, it is a fault. But if he told you that this structure is of a service view, then this fault will not be normal fault, and it also will not be reverse fault it, if it represents a reverse. But now, it must be one of the most famous types of fault, which is strike slip fault. It is a strike slip fault. Why? Because he told you that it represents a surface view. Then you see that there is no any horizontal, there is no any vertical displacement. There is no any vertical displacement. That's to say, I mean, it is totally, the displacement is totally horizontal. Okay? Then it is a normal fault, number, choice number one, it is a normal fault, Yes, it may be normal fault. If he told you that surface view, then it is not a normal fault. It is a strike step. But if he did not tell you surface view, then it will be a normal fault. Finally, as it represents a surface view for a geological structure, the geological structure is a fault. And surface view means it is a strike slip fault, which is a displacement is totally horizontal with no vertical displacement. This figure indicates some of points. Point B is below sea level, point A is sea level, point C and D are above sea level. Then, from the figure, the difference in pressure between point E and any region above it is always. How can I answer some questions like that? As you see, point E indicates sea level. Then the pressure at point E will equal zero. Okay. What about point B? I will discuss with you together not the answer of the questions only, but any comment, I will discuss it with you. The point A is at the, the sea level, then the pressure at point A equal one. Sea level height equal zero, but the pressure, the height of sea level equal zero, but the pressure at point A, which is sea level, equals one. Okay, what about point B? Point B is below sea level. <clears throat> and we discussed together, together before, as you go down below sea level, the atmospheric pressure, which is equal one, will be added to the pressure as a result of the water, water column. The pressure of water column increases by one for each 10 meter depth. That's to say, as you go down for each 10 meter depth, the atmospheric pressure increases by one. Increases by one, but if you wanted to 
get the total pressure, then you will divide the depth divided 10 plus 1. <clears throat> okay. Just to say the pressure at B will be equal to more than 1. The pressure at B will equal more than 1. Why? Because of the depth of water increasing the water column increases the pressure. I told you before, I do not answer the question and itself, but I wanted to make many comments and many recommendations about this, that question. Okay, <clears throat> then point A is at the sea level at height zero, then atmospheric pressure equals one. Point B is below sea level, then the atmospheric pressure will be more than one. But now, the question, the pressure between point A and any region above it, what are the regions above point A? It may be region D and region C. Of course, as we go up like C or D, the atmospheric pressure decreases gradually to have its value for each 5.5 kilometers above. Then, <clears throat> as we go up, both point C or point D will be of pressure less than 1. Because as we go up, the atmospheric pressure decreases gradually as a result of decreasing the air column. Then, point C, the atmospheric pressure at point C is less than 1, at point D is less than 1. Then, the difference between the atmospheric pressure of A at A and atmospheric pressure at C or D will be equal to less than 1 equals less than one. The remarks are as we go up for each 5.5 kilometers upward, atmospheric pressure decreases to half its value. What about the opposite? Yes, when we go down for each 5.5 kilometers downward, the atmospheric pressure is doubled. That's to say the atmospheric pressure will increase to double its value. As we go down for each 5.5 kilometers, the atmospheric pressure will be doubled or will reach double its value. Okay. Another question. <clears throat> now it is a, six, a succession represent, representing certain geological structure. What about this geological structure? <clears throat> you see, it is a horizontal succession. We have cut a section in certain layers. It begins with trilobites. We have to change any fossil to its period. Trilobite means Cambrian. Then ammonites means Triassic. Old birds means Jurassic. Pneumolites means Cenozoic. Huge reptiles means Jurassic. Ammonites means Triassic. Trilobites mean Cambrian. Okay. You see that we began with trilobites, which are related to Cambrian period. And at the end, it is also trilobites, which is relating to the Cambrian period. After trilobites, it is ammonites. What do I mean? <clears throat> I mean that we began with the oldest layer, then recent, recent, and at the center, you find pneumolites with the most recent layer. After that, the layers will be repeated again horizontally. That's to say, the oldest layer is at the two terminals. While we are important to find what is the recent or old layer in the center. In the center, it is Nimolite, which is the most recent one. Then, as a result of repeating of layers horizontally <clears throat> and at this time, 
the two terminals of layer they are the oldest, then the center is the recent. In number right is the center, number right is the recent. Then this structure represents a fold which is syncline fold. Why? Because repeating of layers horizontally, not vertically, horizontally, not vertically, it means a fold. Okay, that's the first step. But after that, what will be the type of the fold? If the center of the fold contains all the layer, all this layer, it will be anticline. But here in our example, the center of the fold is representing the <clears throat> most recent layer. So it represents a syncline fold. Therefore, when we find repeating of layers horizontally, when we find layers will may be repeated horizontally, not vertically, horizontally, then we are about or we must see which layer is in the center by viewing the fossil of this layer you will find if the center is represented by the oldest layer then it will be an anticline but in our example here since the layer in the center is the most recent layer so it represents a certain and syncline fold represents syncline fold. That's the first one. What other? If you have a look to the layers, you find trilobites, Cambrian, ammonites, Triassic. Then, between the first and second layer, there is a period of erosion or a period of non deposition. Why? because there is a gap in the periods. Why? Because there are missed periods which are clear by presence of missed fossils. So fossil mean period and the period mean fossil. Then because there is a gap between trilobites and ammonites periods, then it acts as a surface of unconformity between trilobites and ammonites as a result of absence of the fossil for the Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous period. That's a surface of unconformity. But be careful that in case of presence of a surface of unconformity, if one period is missed, two periods are missed, three periods are missed, it is not important for us the number of periods. Even if one period is missed, it must be related to period of erosion or period of non-deposition, which is a surface of unconformity separating between trilobites and ammonites. But you know that surfaces of unconformity are three types. The first type is non-conformity, which is separating between all the group, which is either igneous or metamorphic, while the recent group is sedimentary. But of course, it is not that, because the groups are all sedimentary. OK, if the old group is inclined or in different slope direction with the recent group, it will be angular and conformative. But it is not angular and conformity because the two groups are parallel to each other. Therefore, that will be the third type of unconformity, which is disconformity, which is disconformity. And for your knowledge, the disconformity is the type of unconformity, which is difficult for the geologist to be detected. Why? Because all the groups are sedimentary and all the layers are parallel to each other. So we can use only the sudden disappearance of fossil content. Therefore, finally, the complete answer is the presence of the oldest layers on the two terminals. To say presence of the recent layers in the center indicates a syncline fold. 
the fault, the final answer is presence of a centrine fault with presence of this conformity, surface of this conformity. The answer is number A. Okay, another question. <clears throat> presence of fragmented rocks on both sides of all the rocks indicates. If you see presence of rocks on both sides, it may be related to either fold or fault. But now, he told you that it is fragmented rocks. Fragmented rocks, then it will not be a fold, but it will be a fault. Okay, but on both sides of the older rocks, indicate the presence of fragmented rocks on both sides of the older rocks. On both sides of the older rocks. Therefore, the older rocks will be above and on both sides will be lower. That's to say, horst. That's to say also, if he told you that when recent layer is surrounded by older ones, if you wanted to have a drawing of both uh, the graben and the horst, if you find that the recent layers will be surrounded by older ones, it must be graben. But if the old layers were surrounded by recent ones, it must be a horst. Just to say, in case of fragmented rocks, just to say also in case of faults. Why? If he told you that in abandoned layers, he is about to say about fold, bending layer about fold. If he told you that the old layers are surrounded by recent ones in the old, in the bending rocks, bending layers, all the layer is surrounded by recent one, that's to say all the layer is in the center, that's to say an anticline fold. But if he told you in bending layers and the recent layer is surrounded by all the ones, it will be a syncline fold. But now it is fragmented rocks. He told you that it is a fragmented rocks, that's to say it is a fold. And I told you before that if the recent layer is surrounded by older one, it will be grabbing. If the older layer are surrounded by recent one, it will be a horst. At the same time, the type of fault which caused rising of the two groups beside it, rising of the two walls beside it, if the fault Cause the rising of the two groups beside it, of course, then it will be fall down. That's to say, it will act as a gravity. Why? The type of fault which caused falling down of the two walls beside it, so it is raised up, so it is called a horst. Okay. <clears throat> Another question. If the atmospheric pressure at point X is 0 0.125 atmospheric pressure and the atmospheric pressure at point Y, it is four times the atmospheric pressure at point X. What is the height of the point Y above sea level? Okay. At first, the atmospheric pressure at point, y, at point X is 0 0.125. Just to say, at sea level, height zero, atmospheric pressure equal one. At height 5.5, .5, atmospheric pressure will equal 0 0.5. At height 11 kilometers, the atmospheric pressure will be 0 0.125. So point X will be at height of 11 kilometers. Okay. And the atmospheric pressure at point Y is four times the atmospheric pressure at point X. 
So the atmospheric pressure at point Y equals 0 0.125 times 4 equal 0 0.5. 0 0.125 times 4 equal 0 0.5. Then the height of point X is equal to the height at which the atmospheric pressure equals 0 0.5, so it will be 5.5 kilometers. As we know that as we go up, atmospheric pressure decreases to half its, its value for each 5.5 kilometers upward. But as we go down, the atmospheric pressure increases to double its value as we go for each 5.5 kilometers down. Okay, another question. That is a geological succession. The opposite figure indicates a geological succession in a certain region. Then, the surface of unconformity is represented by the letter. If you have a look from the down Jurassic, Baleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene. Jurassic is a period, is the second period in the Mesozoic era. After Jurassic, in succession, it must come the Cretaceous. But here, the Cretaceous period is absent. Then there is a surface of unconformity. A surface of unconformity represented by the letter E, because there is a missed delay as a result of the presence of a missed period of time between Jurassic and the Paleocene. Jurassic period is belonging to the second period in the Mesozoic era, and after Jurassic period, it must come Cretaceous. But absence of Cretaceous is an indication for presence of surface of unconformity. And therefore, the structure of unconformity is represented by the letter, the letter E. And what will be the type of unconformity? It will be this conformity. Why? Because both groups are sedimentary and horizontal. We cannot say that it is non-conformity because the old group is not igneous or metamorphic, but sedimentary. And we also cannot say it is an angular unconformity because both groups are parallel to each other. No one is inclined with opposite direction to another. Okay, another question. That is a horizontal section of a tectonic structure. The letter E, P, and C represent different geological periods. Okay. Where A is Carboniferous, B is Silurian, C is Cambrian. We have to stop here. A is Carboniferous, B is Silurian, C is Cambrian. The first notice is that what is the oldest period it is Cambrian. What represents Cambrian C? What is the role of C in relation to the figure? C is in the center of the figure. Okay. Since C is the center of the figure and the C is the oldest, therefore, the figure which is represented by A, B, and C it indicates anticline fold. Indicates an anticline fold. Why? Because the oldest period, which is the Cambrian, lie at the center of this fold. Okay. Then answer. This section may represent anticline fold. Yes, of course, anticline fold. Normal fold, no normal fold, no reverse fold, no any type of fold. Why? because the, the fault is indicated by the fracture accompanied by displacement. 
and here there is no fracture accompanied by displacement. Okay, normal fault and reverse fault are wrong answers, and the client fault is right answer. Why? Because the point C, which is in the center, is representing the oldest layer. Okay. In the last figure, there are two surfaces of unconformance. Which are two surfaces of unconformance? Of course, between the oldest layer, which is represented by C, and the recent one, which is represented by B, there is a surface of unconformance between Cambrian and Silurian. Why? As a result of absence of or deficient in the geological time scale, it is Cambrian or deficient, Silurian. Then the absence of or deficient between C and B, the absence of or deficient between Cambrian and the Silurian, that is a good indication for the presence of a surface of unconformity between C and V. But now, what about the type of this surface of unconformity? Of course, what is the relation between C and B? They are parallel. They are, they are parallel to each other. If you wanted to say they are inclined, no. It is for what is the relation between layer C and the layer B? It is parallel. They are both of them is parallel to the other as there is no any intersection so there is no difference in slope therefore the tectonic structures here are anticline fold as a result of presence of layer c which is the oldest layer in the center second structure is surface of this conformity between c and b as a result of the sudden disappearance of the fossils indicating period of the fish. Also, there is a surface of disconformity between B and E. Why? Because B is representing the Silurian period, while A is representing the Carboniferous period. And of course, after Silurian period, there is Devonian. Silurian, Devonian, then Carbonif. Then the absence of Devonian period between E and B is a good example for presence of surface period of erosion or non deposition, which is meaning period of unconformance. And as a result of being parallel to each other, then the type of surface of unconformity between E and B, it will be surface of disconformance. Okay, then in the last figure, there are two surfaces of unconformity, which are disconformity and disconformity between C and B and between B and E. Here, the structure indicates that this layer is exposed to. Before you try to answer, what about these structures? There are two types of structures. At first, it is a synclined fold. It is a synclined fold. Okay, what else? The second structure is presence of a fold. Okay. What about the force acting on the region to make synchrine fold. The force, the internal force causing the presence of any type of fold, it is compression or pressure, pressure force. Then at first, the presence of a synchrine fold is an indication for the presence of Pressure force. Okay. After that, you see that line which is considered as a faulted lay. Then that means this synclined fold 
is broken down by a fault. Just to say, the recent is the fault and the old is the fault. Okay, what about the type of fault? The other part above the fault plane, which is indicated by the black line, the other part indicates the hanging wall. Then the lower part is the foot wall. Okay. What is the relation of movement between both hanging wall and the foot wall? You see that the hanging wall is moving or moved upward in relation to the foot wall. Therefore, it will act as a reverse fault. Okay, there is a centrine fold and a reverse fault. But here in this case, what about the this reverse fault? You see that the fault plane is nearly horizontal. Or in other meaning, you see that the fault plane makes a very small angle with the horizontal. Or you see that also the slope is very small. The angle between the fault plane and the surface is very small. Therefore, what will be the type of the reverse fault in which the angle yeah, of the yeah. slope is very small? That is the thrust fault, which is also called creeping fault. Thrust fault, which is a special case of the reverse fault in which the hanging wall moved above the fault plane is very of very small slope. Then, the pressure caused the presence of synclined fold and also the pressure increased causing the reverse fold, which is a special case, which is a thrust fold. Then, the structure indicates that these layers are exposed to tension no, because tension causes the first choice. Tension no, because the tension causes presence of normal fault and both grabbing uh, and host. Okay, number B, pressure then tension no, because pressure okay, but tension no tension because tension makes normal fault. Tension, then pressure, then breaking. Tension, no type of tension here. Okay, pressure, then increasing the pressure. Yes, of course, because the pressure at first to meet a fold, then increasing the pressure meet the fold to be broken down. And in this case, it made, it made a reverse fold. But as a result of the very small slope of the fault plane, so it is a thrust fault or a cleaving fault. Okay, another question. A person in an airplane at a height of 11 kilometers. Since the person is at a height of 11 kilometers, then he is at pressure of 0.25 atm. Okay, the person in an airplane is at a height of 11 kilometers. The airplane is at height of 11 kilometers. The airplane is at pressure of 0.25. But what about the person inside the airplane? Any person inside any closed region must be affected by the normal atmospheric pressure, which is 1 atm. Again, what about the atmospheric pressure on persons in closed regions? What about the 
atmospheric pressure exerted on persons on closed regions. Like what closed region? A person in any airplane is under the effect of atmospheric pressure of one atmospheric pressure. And also, the person in any submarine closed region, the person in any submarine, whatever the depth, he will be under the effect of atmospheric pressure equal one. Okay. Now, a person in an airplane at the height of 11. At the height of 11, the pressure exerted upon the airplane is 0 0.25. But the pressure exerted upon the human, okay, it will be 0. And another one at the, at the sea level, okay? The person which is at sea level is affected by a pressure equal one. Then, the person, then, the pressure exerted on them will be, the pressure exerted on each of them will be one ATM. The pressure exerted on each of them will be one ATM. Why? Because the person upward at height 11 is still inside the airplane, is still inside a closed region. And the pressure inside any closed region will equal the one atmospheric pressure. And the other person which is who is at the sea level, he will be affected by pressure also equal one. So the atmospheric pressure in both of them in this case will be one ATM. But if he asked you what will be the difference in pressure between them, the difference in pressure, difference in pressure, the first one is at one ATM, the second one is at one ATM, then the difference <coughs> in pressure will be one minus one equal zero. The pressure exerted on both of them equal one. The difference in pressure exerted in both in them equal one minus one equal zero. Okay. Another question, the molten layer which has a role in the Earth's magnetism is one of a density about, is one of a density about. How can I try to answer this question? At first, the layer which is has magnetic field, the layer which is has which is of magnetism or which causes plays a role with causing the Earth's magnetism, of course it is the inner core and the outer core, which is the core. Then the layer I did not say now molten layer. The layer which has a role in the Earth's magnetism is the core. Okay. But the core is divided into two parts. Outer core, which is the other one, and inner core, which is the lower one. Okay. That is the core. But he told you that not the core, but the molten layer. The outer core, of course, as you, as you know, it is a molten rotating around the solid inner one. Again, then the core is subdivided into two parts. An outer core, which is molten, rotates around the inner one, which is solid. But now he asks about the molten core, the molten layer. The molten layer, then he uh, is asking about the outer core. What about the outer core? The outer core is molten and of less density than the inner core. How the density of the outer core is about 10 grams per cubic centimeter, while the density of the inner core 
is about 14 grams per kilo centimeter. That's because as we go down, the density increases. Then the question is the molten layer which has a role in the Earth's magnetism is of density about the molten layer which is the, the outer core density about 10 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, another question. The best explain for the presence of level marks on the sedimentary rocks is what about level marks? Level marks, of course, is one of the geological structures. Which type of geological structure? The primary geological structures. Why did we classify it as a primary geological structure? Of course, because it is occurred as a result of the effect of external factors. Okay. Now again, <clears throat> the best explain from the presence of level marks on sedimentary rocks is because of the or because of its being as one of the primary geological structures. The primary geological structures are the structures which are caused by the effect of external factors. Okay, can we say that it is the heat emitted from the interior of the Earth? Of course, no. Why? Because the level marks are considered one of the examples of the uh, effect of primary geological structure, and the primary geological structure are not related to the heat emitted from the interior of the Earth. Okay. Is it as a result of the tectonic tension force? Of course, no, because tectonic tension force is related to the internal factors. Is it as a result of the tectonic pressure force? Of course, no, because I told you before, tectonic either tension or pressure, it is related to the force coming from the interior of the Earth. Okay, it is a result of wind and the water motion, of course, yes. Why? Because both the wind and the water motion are related to the, inter the external factors affecting the Earth. And the rebel marks are primary structures which are related to the external factors coming from the external of the Earth. Then the right answer is number D, the best explained for the presence of rebel marks on the sedimentary rock is the wind and water motion. Okay, <clears throat> what about the third question? The bottom of Mediterranean Sea has rocks rich in the bottom of Mediterranean Sea has rocks rich in. First, the Earth's crust consists of two parts, continental crust and oceanic crust. The continental crust is Cl, silicon and aluminium, and lighter, which is mainly granitic rocks. Why the oceanic crust that was because for the continent while the, while the oceanic crust is related to the sea rocks, related to silicon and magnesium, which are basic rocks, which are heavier rocks, all that for both the continental crust and the oceanic crust. The bottom of the Mediterranean Sea has rocks rich in silicon and aluminium. Of course, no. Why? 
because he is asking about the bottom of Mediterranean Sea, while the rocks of Mediterranean Sea are sea mass, which in silicon and magnesium. But the first choice is gold, of course, while because the silica and aluminium, it means the CL, which is related to the continental crust. Okay, but now he is asking about the bottom of Mediterranean Sea, which is the oceanic crust. The oceanic crust is sea, which consists of silicon and magnesium, which is the basic rocks, and then some in wheat. Another section, how many surfaces of unconformity? How many surfaces of unconformity? Be careful. Okay. At first, if we wanted to have a look from the bottom to the top, there are some geological structures in the inclined layers. The violet one has a fault. The fault plane is separating between hang, both hanging wall and the foot wall. At the bottom, at the lower of this figure, at the right hand side, it is a violet color. You see that this is a type of a reverse fault. That is a type of reverse fault. Okay. Then, at first, the violet layers are formed. Then, the fault make breaking it down, made breaking down for this layer. Okay. Then, at first, we have an, a reverse fault. We have a reverse fault. Okay. If you want it to transfer to the other one, which includes also both the violet and the brown one, here there is a surface of unconformity between the two groups of the seven of the violet and the brown in the bottom one and the group above it, which have the rest of the violet and the brown one. That is a type of surface of unconformity, which is an angular unconformity. Why we call it an angular unconformity as a result of the difference in slope between layers. Then, now we had two structures. The reverse fault, for, fault in the down right part and a surface of angular unconformity above between the two inclined layers. Okay, what about the third structure? The third structure is between the other inclined layers and the horizontal ones above them. It is between the other inclined layers and the horizontal ones above them. What is the type of this surface of this conformity? Of course, it is angular unconformity. It is angular unconformity. Finally, if we had the shape of some fossils in the group between A, B, and C, if there is any missed layer as a result of presence of any missed type of fossil, then we can clearly say that it is the presence of this conformity. Okay, now, how many surfaces of unconformity here? There are two or three surfaces of unconformity or four surfaces of unconformity. Oh, no. There is one fault. It is the first structure. And there is three surfaces of unconformity. The first surface of unconformity is angular between the two colored ones and the surface of angular unconformity of between the 
color the above one and the other one, that is the second surface of unconformity. The third surface of unconformity is between the parallel layers above. Therefore, there are three surfaces of unconformity, and there is a structure which is called a reverse fault. Then there are three surfaces of unconformity, and one other structure which is normal fault. Therefore, the type of that uh, the geological structures are three. One structure is the reverse fault in the lower type, and other three structures of surfaces of unconformity. Okay, another question. The statement describing the importance of fold is, we can return back again to the importance of fold. Its absence in both igneous and the metamorphic rocks, no, he told you that the folds are present in all types of rocks, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary, but more common or more clear where in sedimentary. Okay, they are present in porous rocks reserved with the run solid materials. Its presence above lacqueries containing economic mineral. Its presence below lobulus in which oil is collected. Here, both one, E, both E, C, and D. But they are in B. They are present in borous rocks, reserve the non solid materials. How can borous rocks reserve non solid materials? The other one, faults are classified according to the base of classification of faults. The position of elementary structures of fold in nature, the type of rocks which the fold must pile, the economic importance, the amount of the affecting force causing the displacement, the amount of the affecting force causing the displacement, it is not a factor causing description or classification of the faults. Because, as you know, the faults are mainly classified according to the basic elements of the faults, like what? The direction of both hanging wall and foot wall. And even if there is no hanging wall or uh, foot wall, cannot be detected easily, like in the strike slip fault. Okay. Then the position of elements, elementary structure of fault in nature. What do you mean by the position of the elementary structure of fault in nature? The elementary structures of fault, which is which are called the fault elements. What about the fault elements? It is both hanging wall, foot wall, and the fault grid. These are the elements of the fault. Okay. If you want to have a look to the another question, the ancient Egyptian used the green carbonate mineral in making. The ancient Egyptian used the green carbonate mineral in making. At first, what about the green carbonate mineral? It is malachite. Okay, now we can answer zero for at first. You can get the password which uh, drive you to the correct answer. Ancient Egyptian used green carbonate mineral. What about the green carbonate mineral? It is the carbonate mineral malachite. How could the ancient Egyptian use the malachite? Did he use it in glass industries? No, it is for. He, did he use it in wars tools? No, he used chairs. Did he use it in steel industries? No, he used iron mineral. Used in decoration stones? Yes, of course, he used them in decoration stones. Okay. 
A minimum of mass 30 kilogram. Then the mass of the same volume of water is 2 kilogram. We must have a stop here. Mass of the mineral is 30 and the mass of the same volume of water is 2. Therefore, the specific weight of this mineral will be 30 divided 2 equals 15. Then, the ratio between each specific weight, which is equal to 15, and the specific weight of galena, which is equal to 7.5. The specific weight of this mineral is 15. 30 divided 2 equal 15. <clears throat> specific, weight, specific weight of galena is 7.5. Therefore, the ratio will be between 15 to 7.5, that's to say 2.1. Okay. The mineral of fibrous tissue is characterized by, when I say the mineral of fibrous tissue, that's to say one of the minerals you have studied only of fibrous tissue, that's to say it is the Obel mineral. It is the Obel mineral. Then the mineral of fibrous tissue is characterized by, that's to say, Obel is characterized by pearly luster, of course, no, because the pearly luster is for transfers, but Obel, we do not know in our studying, we do not know what is the luster of Obel. Okay. A lot of color, we did not study anything about a lot Metallic luster, of course, Obel has no metallic luster. But brave color, yes, of course. In the property of brave color, he told us that it is related to Obel and diamond. Obel for its fibrous tissue and diamond, di Obel is its for fibrous tissue and I, diamond as it reflects the light falling on its surface to violet and red colors. Okay. The mineral which contains two of the most abundant elements in the earth's crust from this mineral. At first, before you try to answer, what is the mineral which contains the two of the most abundant elements? What are these two most abundant elements? Of course, it is the oxygen, which uh, occupies about 46.6%. The first is oxygen. Second is silicon. Therefore, the two abundant, the, the, the two most abundant elements are silicon and oxygen. The combination between silicon and oxygen will combine together making the Quartz mineral and will make the silicates mineral. Silicates mineral like what? Calcite and gypsum? No. Calcite is carbonate, gyps carbonate, gypsum is sulfate. Magnetite and galena, magnetite is oxide, galena is sulfide. Sulfur and fluoride, sulfur is native. Fluoride is calcium fluoride. Amphibol and vaccine, yes, amphibol and vaccine, which belong to the silicates group. It is written in your book, in the table. When light falls on galena, when light falls on galena, it will. Galena will allow light to pass through? No, we do not know in our study because we do not know about the transparency of galena because the ability of the mineral to allow light to pass through, it means the transparency. But in our study, we did, know, we did not know anything about the galena transparency. <clears throat> it will reflect light giving luster in all directions. Of course, we do not know anything about the luster of galena. It absorb all light falling of it. No, we did not. We did not study any mineral absorbing all light in it. <clears throat> then, did galena reflect light strongly? Yes. Why? 
because the ability of the mineral which re to reflect to reflect light strongly means high luster means metallic luster and the luster is the ability of the mineral to reflect light strongly and since galena has metallic luster then the metallic luster or the minerals which has metallic luster are those minerals which have the ability to reflect light falling on its surface strongly. Okay, now we had some of the some of the questions on both chapter one and chapter two together. Meeting you again, inshallah, next week to have some other questions and about the other chapters. Have a nice time. My greetings, Mr. Mohammed Al-Mahas.